Got it. All right, this is the final session of our vendor show. So this is the REI group, and it's Craig Raridan, right? Raridan. Yep. That is correct. And Matt Vasquez uh, here with REI. Um, they are going to share with us a little bit about what uh, they've got going on with REI, but we would like to just take a moment to acknowledge all of our vendors uh, for one last time. ADQ, Auto Safety House, Bronability, um, who else we got here? Kansas State Bus Sales, Cummins Engines, REI, RWC Group, and the Trust. Uh, their support for this year's virtual platform has allowed us to stand by our commitment to present student transportation information and relevant content to all of our members. So, um, again, thank you guys for being a part of TAA. We look forward to uh, Craig coming up every year in Flagstaff that I think at least the last five years, I want to say. Does that sound about right, Craig? Three. Three, three but it, three, but it seems, seems long, like five. Seems longer, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so just as a reminder to all of the chat boxes uh, open there, I don't know how many people are going to get to attend. It might be a fairly small room. So those of you as questions come up, we can just kind of have more of a personal feel to it. Um, and lastly, don't forget about the final ceremony, the closing ceremonies at the end. And we will have a um, post-conference survey that's going to go out to everybody. So I uh, appreciate everybody being here. With that being said, I'll hand it off to Craig and his team, and we'll go from there. All right. Great. You know, again, Jason, thanks for having us. We really appreciate the opportunity. Um, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity over the last couple of days to sit down on a few things. The keynote, I caught all three of the OEMs uh, today, uh, RWC, Auto Safety House, and Canyon State, of course. And then, uh, but I want to, uh, just a little bit of ho housekeeping first. So I know that uh, the other day it was talked about the CD-ROM. So I pulled out my CD-ROM, and I and I hope Tommy and I hope you know maybe Megan they're seeing this on a recording. So on my CD-ROM, by the way, some of my pet peeves are post-it notes and people in the checkout line that write personal checks. Just letting everybody know that right there. I thought I thought I'd get that out of the way. Awesome. And, which, by the way, I think it's also kind of cool that the CD-ROM that I found actually says Zoom right on it. So that's awesome. kind of kind of interesting. Um, now I get to the point. I'm going to try to I'm going to share my screen here. I don't know if it gives me the ability to share my my entire monitor or just a particular document. I'm going to, do I click this multiple participants can share. I just click, I'll just click the share screen. There we go. Yeah, I see it. it. Yep. You got it. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to share, actually I'm going to share screen too. I'm going to share the whole screen. There we go. All right. Hopefully you're, um, you're able to see the screen at the moment. I have a few things laid over the other. Yep. Sure okay. Do. So, you know, and actually, Jason made, made made mention of it. So my first TAA was a couple of years ago. Some of you may know this gentleman uh, standing next to me by the name of Trace Tolby. That was the, the Back to the Future uh, event where one of the parts that I enjoy is, is the costume contest. And uh, obviously, Mr. Mr. Tolby won first place there that year, and I won second place. I'm not bitter about it by any means. But <laughs> And then another thing, last year, I don't know if you knew this, um, my trade show kit actually got stuck in Denver. So I never got to unveil this for the superheroes. So here's my opportunity. Here's my big chance. Um, so it's a Green Lantern I costume, head to toe. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm about six foot six. And so the thing actually fit. I was excited to wear it, didn't get to wear it. So there it is. Thank you. I think you would have uh, won with that for sure. Uh, well, thank you. I, <laughs> It would have been fun, but it didn't get happen. And then I understand this year would have been pirate theme, so I never got the opportunity. Rock, to get it was rock star, rock star themed. Oh, that's oh, well, that's right. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm I'm actually yeah. confusing. I have a, da a daughter who's in dance, and uh, us prop us dancing dads. Uh, we we were going to be pirates, so I had the two confused. Pirates for next year sounds awesome. There you go. I think <laughs> we could do. A, I, I certainly think we could do a lot with that for sure. Awesome. So anyway, enough of seeing that. Now that we got that out of the way. Um, so a little bit about REI. I know we have a group, it looks like about 13 participants here. And, um, I recognize a couple of names on there, but you know, I don't, I don't know who's all familiar with this. So I'm just going to give a general overview and then to be very interactive at any point in time, if anybody wants to unmute their line, ask a question, or just use the chat feature that, uh, my esteemed colleague and friend and, um, I'm a partner in crime, Natalie Vasquez, she goes by Nat. 
is uh, monitor, monitoring the chat room as well. So a um, little bit about REI. So the first slide I'm going to bring up, and I'm going to I'm going to put this into into slideshow mode. So this is a look at our building. Now we Natalie and I both are in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, our company has been around since 1938. We have about 170 employees. This is a look at our manufacturing and production facility. That's about three and a half acres. And so there's the front of the building, some of our staff of a photo taken a couple of years ago. Uh, we're in our third generation of family ownership. So we are a privately owned company. This is a look at our warehouse uh, down here along the bottom. You see some of our staff member, some of our staff members, but mostly warehouse engineering, um, some, some of the production staff also. Um, so at any point in time, we carry about $10 million in inventory. That's important in the summertime when school districts are looking to get their school buses equipped with what we do, which is mostly camera surveillance, but a few other things too, which we will get into. You may recognize some of these brands. Um, th they're pretty prominent. These are, we operate in the, uh, the school markets, motor coach, shuttle, transit, agriculture, and so on. We, we've, I've even done some quotes for garbage trucks from time to time. So it just really anybody that might want a, a camera system or some sort of surveillance system on their vehicle. Uh, we've also done some recent stuff with uh, driver's ed vehicles too. Those are some of the markets we serve. One of the things we pride ourselves on, and uh, for those that don't know, REI actually stands for Radio Engineering Industries. This is our engineering team. And believe it or not, most of these individuals that you see in the picture have been with our company uh, a few generations ago of our DVR, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So that's one of the things we pride ourselves on. We're, we're also, I believe, the only company in our industry that does what we do that can claim ISO 9001 status, meaning we adhere to certain audit standards. Um, so everything is, um, we, we actually got to go a few, a few times a year, we go through different audits to ensure the highest level of quality and quality control and, and so on and so forth. Here's kind of a fun video. I know in some of the other presentations they've, they've, they've had videos. This is a shaker table. Uh, as many of us know with school buses, you have a few elements, one of which is vibration and shock. So this is our shaker room. We not only put our own products on here, but from time to time we've been known to put some of our competitors products on on the shaker table as well. I, I think the audio, I'm gonna try to get the audio to work here. I think, I don't know if you're gonna hear the audio. Tell me if you hear the audio, audio when I put at play. No, if you um, go up to the top uh, under share, go to view options, I think it is somewhere in there, there's like a, a or I'm sorry, over on the- um, More? The, yeah, maybe under more, there should be a play from computer audio. I don't think Tommy's in here. Okay. I'm looking for it. It's not that important. It's really not that exciting, the sound. You know what? <laughs> but, but I, I actually, honestly, let's not even worry about it. Um, so that, that's our shaker table. I'll, I'll go ahead and click play again. Only I'm going to hear it. But So you get an idea. As much as we can, we... We also have an actual school bus at our facility here in Omaha too, that we do a lot of testing. We have partners around the Omaha area, uh, a couple of contractors as well as school districts that um, do a lot of testing ongoing. So uh, another item that we, you'll find at our manufacturing production facility, we actually, believe it or not, we actually picked this up from, from, um, from NASA. This is a thermotron. It can bring a room to extreme heat and extreme cold. So, uh, in our to the territory that Natalie and I oversee, we have customers as far north as Barrow, Alaska, which would be North Slope School District. It's on the top of Alaska, the furthest, just about the furthest northern point that there is. And of course, our contingency here in Arizona, we know that it gets fairly warm um, south toward the Mexican border, especially and in the valley. Um, so it's important to have devices that can hold up under those conditions. So I'll just click play. You can actually see the steam coming off that. Uh, one of the other tests that this guy went through, this was an actual incident that occurred in Texas. It's a bus fire that I'll just kind of run the video. Uh, there actually is no sound on it, but you'll notice here that the bus itself goes up in flames. Uh, the driver comes out and extinguishes the flame. And then uh, you're going to see it here in a second. It's going to, you'll see the, the, the burst of what happened. Nobody got hurt. 
nobody was on the bus. You see the cabin. This was actually our camera system that recorded this event. And then uh, you're going to notice here in a moment, as the bus continues to go on fire, you're going to see the fire truck pulling up, at which point uh, they dump gallon after gallon of water onto this bus. So you might notice something interesting about this, and that is that we still had the footage because believe it or not, our DVR, which I'll skip to here. I'm going to skip around on these slides a little bit. Oop, there we go. So our, our DVR, it, by design, it, it actually protected the hard drive that was inside. So we had the footage up until the point that the camera cables got burnt. Uh, but the hard drive itself was pretty well protected inside the, uh, the DVR casing that's there. So this is really where it all starts. This is our main our, this is the main hub of our products. It's it's the recording device. You can see the front as well as the back for those that haven't seen our, our DVR, uh, which stands for digital, excuse me, digital video recorder. And then the, the back of the device, which uh, you can connect a lot of different things to it as well. I'm going to pause for a second and um, just going to see if anybody has any questions. I'm also gonna, going to read some of the, uh, the comments there. Thank you, Frank. Good one. Uh, tall Jack Sparrow. Nice. <laughs> I appreciate that. And then the CD-ROM, very good. I, I hope Tommy does see that, which by the way, anybody that might be viewing this at say 2 a.m. tonight, uh, you know, because I understand this, this is recorded. So I know that uh, others could be watching this at any point in time. I see we have another lover of, of costumes there and then that's Sharon Jett. Hello, Sharon. So I don't see any questions. So I'm gonna kind of skip back up here. Here we go. So back in 2017, we rolled out to the marketplace in the school markets. We were the first to do this. Uh, some of you on the line may in your own school buses, or you may have seen or heard about, whether it was last year's trade show at Flag to staff or otherwise, uh, the whole concept of having a camera that is a wide view camera. And our camera gets 170 degree horizontal field of view and about a 95 degree vertical field of view. So as you can see, some other competitors may not have quite the field of view that our system does. Um, so it's a pretty popular view that captures most of the interior of the bus. And then one other thing that we pride ourselves on is a very solid, what we call wide dynamic range. So in some of the clips you might see here soon, uh, if we get to the point of showing those where you can actually see the vehicles that are outside the bus because of the clarity that it produces. One of the things that Natalie and I do quite a bit of, uh, whether it be for school districts in Arizona or whether it be any of the dealers, Canyon State, RWC, Auto Safety House, we actually uh, create quite a few customized camera placement charts. And I know that we have a couple of individuals in the call. I know that Frank uh, at Canyon State has seen those, Sharon Jett, of course, and Mr. Duskin. Um, I believe all of you have um, seen at one point in time or another an actual camera placement chart that shows where the cameras would go. In this particular instance, it shows that there's one windshield view, one viewing out the back of the bus, and then four cameras in a crisscross pattern, which we, we believe not only gets you a very good visual, but you're also putting the microphone uh, for audio on four different points staggered throughout the bus to be able to, to try to capture the best possible audio that you can. Our cameras, I think a good time to mention that we also offer they have infrareds and you can actually see in the bottom right, um, the lens in the middle and then the two infra infrareds that are on the cameras themselves to when it's nighttime, you can see everything on the bus, but it would just be in black and white as opposed to color. This is something that maybe not everybody knew. I know that there are some on the line that are aware of this. Um, what you're seeing here is uh, just a few kind of, uh, you can actually use your iPhone your Android device, a tablet, even a laptop, and you can connect to our DVR for the purposes of getting into the, re the programming of the DVR. Things like setting, we're, we're one of the few, if not the only companies that give you the flexibility of programming your cameras to either 720p or 1080p resolution. You can also manipulate the frame rates per second, which having them up to anything over 20, you're gonna get that fluid, just like you're watching a Blu-ray Blu at home or a DVD or streaming uh, Netflix, uh, everything's gonna be fluid and seamless. You're not gonna see it in a very choppy way, kind of like 
the old days of max headroom where you see kind of that choppiness. So um, a lot of flexibility there. Um, we've gotten a lot of accolades as far as giving um, actually school, school districts and dealers and installers the ability to go, not only go into the programming, but you can also see, as you see from this clip, you can see live views while on the bus, as well as recorded playback, which is over here. So you could actually take your iPhone, for example, out to the bus and you could record a clip um, as long as you had a flash drive or an SD card of which to record it on. And, or if it were a laptop, you could even utilize our video management software, which we will talk about here in a moment. Any hey, Craig. Questions? Yes, go ahead, Nat. Their question is, uh, how do you connect to the phone or the tablet via Bluetooth? Or they're wanting to know how you connect that. Perfect, excellent question. So uh, the DVR itself actually acts as a Wi-Fi access point. So what you would, let's, let's say that's an iPhone, you would, you would actually download our REI DVR toolkit from your Apple, um, Apple Store or Google Play Store if, it's, uh, if it is an Android device. And once you've downloaded that free app, you can then uh, connect, you, you actually go to your Wi-Fi settings on your iPhone or Android device and you connect to the DVR by um, actually choosing the bus or the bus name. Let's say it's Flagstaff, for example, Flagstaff Unified School District. It'd be something like FUSD-001 and then it is password protected. So you could, uh, you get a default password to begin with and then you could set a, def a password in order to only allow certain individuals to get into uh, the, the actual system itself. So I believe that answers that question. That is, it's not Bluetooth, it is actually a Wi-Fi access point. You don't need to have Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, this could be done anywhere. It could be on a highway somewhere if you wanted to get into it. Um, the DVR itself is just producing its own Wi-Fi access point to connect to it to get into programming, see live views, and playback. By the way, thank you, TAA Treasury, for the comment. We appreciate that. And then, uh, as you can see, we have a record time estimator. A lot of a lot of folks will ask, "Okay, so what kind of record time can I expect? How far will this go back on my calendar?" Given that you know we run two routes a day for so much time period. It depends on how many cameras, it depends on the resolution of which they're set, and also the frame rate. And when you adjust those things, which this is a static image, but you would actually see the record time of the mainstream. Mainstream relates to 720p or 1080p resolution, whereas substream would be the equivalent of something like a TV that you might watch in the 80s or 90s, um, which would be an analog stream as far as resolution. A little bit of a peek of our uh, VMS software, which, which is video management software. It's the software that manages the video, of course. You're seeing a lot of things on your screen here. Um, and we can, if we have time and if it permits, and if uh, you know, we, we can show a little bit about that as well. Um, there, you can access the recorded footage by pulling the hard drive out of the DVR. That's probably the most common way. Many districts, and I know Flagstaff is one of these, as well as a lot of others, are, are moving toward and, and in some capacity are uh, using, if their lot or bus barn has Wi-Fi connectivity throughout, you can actually program the DVR, as long as you have an antenna, to connect the DVR itself when it's on the lot or within range of the school's Wi-Fi network. And you could actually click this little Wi-Fi option up here and connect to any of the buses that are visible within the network. Of course, they would need to be within range. If the bus is out on the route, at that point, you would need a cellular connection and a cellular data, data plan, which is a whole other story. Seeing if there are any questions there, kind of looking at the- And is know, the so data that. plan, is that something that could be piggybacked on another plan that we have for like a GPS program, or is that gonna be a completely separate purchase for the plan? Sure, that is a very good question. And, and that is, uh, it, it would be a dedicated cellular line. So for example, I think what you might be asking if you have Zonar, Synovia, TransFinder, some other provider uh, that offers e either GPS tracking or some sort of routing software. It, there are a couple of ways to do it. Some of the newer D DVRs that we're coming out with are actually cellular equipped. Um, the other way, and, I, and I'll show this here in a moment, 
there is a, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and flip to it. You can actually, um, so this is a cradle point modem and router. This could do two things. One, uh, you can provide Wi-Fi access to students by simply having a cradle point modem and router. The other side of this has a couple Ethernet ports and uh, you would, the coax, you would connect it to an antenna that goes on top of the bus, which could capture LTE data. At that point, it is up to the school district to procure their own government um, data plan from either Verizon, Sprint, or AT&T, or whichever uh, carrier of choice. I'm not sure if uh, Cellular One would be an option for some parts up in Northern Arizona, but uh, I'm sure it could be as long as you could provide the IMEI number to that particular carrier. So, but I know that, actually, I don't know about the Cellular One, but I do know that we offer Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint. So that's one way, so you can provide Wi-Fi to students, but with this also, if you connect an ethernet cable from the cradle point modem and router to the back of the DVR, you can actually use your video management software, and I'm gonna go back to that screen. Uh, you'll notice that in the, if you, it might be kind of small for some of your screens, but you see where it says live view at the top, and there's a district in Nebraska, David City in Nebraska, that actually does this. They have the ability to actually live view what's going on on their buses at any mo at any given time that the buses are running. D does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Has, uh, is there a certain time of the year that REI puts out their updates? Like, is there two updates a year and it's usually in these two months or is it just once a year? So we can kind of be able to put it on our calendar so we can make sure that we're always updated in our software. Sure, yeah, that's a, a, another very good question. Um, so the school bus industry, as a lot of us may know, it, it follows the computer industry. And uh, with the software being something that you would need to download, um, the, when, when updates happen, and, and, and a good example of that, I know after some older systems, the HD 400 and 800 series, when 2020 happened, which uh, let's face it, a lot of bad things happened in 2020, but our software actually had a bit of a glitch in it that uh, we discovered. So at any point in time, if you'll notice, if you notice there's something change, changing or if there are firmware updates, I'm gonna slide this onto the screen. There is, uh, we have an REI customer support site, radioeng.info, that uh, does, if, it's, if you're referring to the HD5, for example, or the HD series, you'll find the software downloads, firmware updates, and so on, and then if anybody has ever called our technical support line, they can answer those questions as well. But as far as having something pushed out to the masses, unfortunately, you know, we have so many principals, superintendents, uh, various individuals that might have downloaded the software that uh, there's really no way at this moment to notify everyone of a firmware update. Um, unless you have our Armor software, which is a whole other that's a whole other level. That's that's automation. There's licensing um, for each, and then you'd also need Wi-Fi or cellular connection to be able to use Armor. So again, that's that and that's radioeng.info. So that's a little bit about the video management software. So a few of the options that are on a lot of school buses that are rolling around out there, there's an event marker, also known as a panic button. This not only is an opportunity for the driver to mark an event, but gives them the ability, it's also used as a diagnostic tool. So that if there's something wrong with the system, if there's video loss or the system isn't recording, uh, the event marker itself will flash different colors and in different ways, notifying a driver or whoever is doing system checks that there may be something wrong with, with the DVR itself. Sensor harness, another common item. This within the recorded footage will tell you things like red war if the red warnings were on, the yellow warnings, left turn signal, right turn, stop arm, brake, front door, rear door, panic button, and ignition. I know I went through those kind of quickly. But. And then earlier we kind of, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, we do offer antennas that if you have Wi-Fi at your bus lot or bus barn, uh, the antenna will help you get connectivity to be able to uh, get, get access to the recording footage, recorded footage without having to physically pull the hard drive. 
as well as a G GPS map that is a, it's a passive map that allows you to basically put, put the bus anywhere along the route. So if an incident happened, for example, and you knew that it happened, uh, let's say on Birchwood Drive, you could actually uh, put the bus right at that point along the map to, instead of having to scroll through uh, footage to be able to find the incident if you knew where it happened geographically instead. Uh, this is an accelerometer or a G-force sensor. It helps you to determine if a bus maybe takes a corner um, on, on two wheels or if there's excess, excessive braking or otherwise. So those are some good metrics that might come in handy from time to time. Uh, Natalie and I were just in Denver last week uh, presenting to a very, very large school district who asked us the question, so on the front of my DVR, what if I have an SD card or what if, what if I want to make sure that, no, that you know, the driver or anybody d doesn't tamper with, that, uh, with, with the, the DVR itself, either the front or the back? So we do offer, there are end caps that go on the back of the, the DVR to cover all the wiring securely and then a front plate that you can lock with a key to be able to prevent anybody from getting to that. We've also had some districts uh, from time to time that, that may have issues with theft. So we offer a lock box that the DVR could be put into. Again, we already talked about the cradle point modem and router as well as the antenna. Some of the other items that uh, REI offers and has offered for many years, uh, backup camera systems. So if you're having issues where uh, let's say, for example, you, you want to put in a, the bus itself doesn't, it's not one of the newer buses that shows the driver when they back up on a monitor what's behind them like a lot of our vehicles do. That's something that we do offer on an after aftermarket level. Radios, microphones, PA systems, uh, speakers, um, sometimes activity buses have been equipped with monitors to be able to display videos. Again, here's that cradle point modem and router, SD cards. We offer a 360 system too, that's a driver assist, which can be uh, put into our, our DVR also. Armor, which we talked about, it's a fleet management software that's offered. And then one of our newest additions, we just became a distributor uh, officially licensed for Mobileye. I know some of the OEMs talked about Bendix, uh, as well as some, some of the other systems that allow for uh, collision avoidance systems, things like if you're following too closely behind a vehicle in front of you, it will alert the driver or kind of that heart, that braking system that automatically brakes if something gets in the way. Um, so if you have, have buses that are a little bit older in your fleet and wanted to equip them with mobile eye, that is an opportunity to do so. And this is a little bit about our, our 360 system that would show on the driver assist monitor that would go inside the bus. And then that's, uh, and this is information for, so if anybody wants to, to take a picture of your screen, uh, this is how you can reach either Natalie or myself uh, about anything really, whether it's support, whether it's uh, an inquiry about systems. Like I said, we, we do work very closely with all three of the, all three of the, the OEMs in Arizona. And uh, most often when school districts, of course, would get systems from us, it'd be with the purchase of a new bus. But uh, so we're here to help. We're here to support. We're here to do what we can to, answer any questions you may have. Does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna pull up a couple of, uh, of the customized camera placement charts that we've done. I know that Sharon's on the line from Flagstaff. This was a, uh, a, a, a flat nose rear engine large bus that an 82 passenger that, as you can see, there's a camera that looks out the front windshield, camera that's on the front bulkhead looking rearward, and then a number of cameras along the side of the bus to capture uh, what happens between the seats. And I'm sure, I'm sure many of you have plenty, plenty of stories of incidents where, where cameras have come in useful. Hey, Craig, I have a question, please. Sure. Do you have, other than a, uh, uh, the phone app, do you guys have little monitors that you can either tap in through 
uh, Bluetooth or wire in to where you can see um, the cameras? We sure do. Um, in fact, before the HD5, I think it's 70, uh, I can't remember, the, trying to think of the part number. Scrambling to find it, I'll find it. I know that, uh, Natalie, do you recall, I don't know, it's called, it's a viewing monitor. I'm trying to think of the part number, but it's actually a handheld monitor. And I had a picture of it, but of course, right now I'm scrambling to find it. But that is one way that you basically plug it into the, on the front of the DVR itself. It's not necessarily Bluetooth, it's, it's wired. But other than your iPhone or your Android device, or you can even use a laptop to connect to the, the DVR. But the front of the DVR itself actually has two audio video ports. So you could really take any, any type of monitor that you could connect the audio and the video. Uh, we've even known of taking TVs and taking the yellow wire and the white wire and actually connecting it to the DVR itself. Does that answer your question, Chair? Yes, it, I just needed a couple ideas. <laughs> sure. Um, because I still have some of the old systems. So I right. have two of the REI and then I have the older non REI systems and um, my monitor has been acting up. So that was just kind of a off the wall question. You bet. Yeah, I can sync up with the app. I can send an email. Once I find it, I, I will send you our details about that particularly. It's just a monitor you hold in your hand and it uh, um, allows you to get into the system in, in a wired way. Thank you, Craig. You bet. So that's Flagstaffs. Um, I know I know, Mr. Duskin's on the line. I think I actually had one. I actually had a camera placement chart for Roosevelt here that we'll, we'll bring up. So that's kind of what it looks like with, with three cameras internally. Uh, one thing I think we, we haven't the actual VMS, I'm going to pull this and slide it up on the screen. So what's most common in Arizona is the, it would be the interior side views. There we go. And you can do a lot of things with the software, such as zooming in. You could also take a snapshot. Showing you the blur feature. I do not know why that did not do it, but some other kind of more advanced features you can also, on the left of the video management software, you can search and uh, it'll bring up a dialog box. If you have a sensor harness hooked up, you actually have the ability. So let's say you wanted to know every time the bus exceeded 660 miles per hour, or if you wanted to know every time the stop arm went down or the front door opened or every time the brakes were applied, any one of these metrics, but right now we have it set up for speed. So I'll click search. Uh, you'll notice that it put every time the bus exceeded 60 miles per hour over here, as well as on the timeline on the bottom, every red hash mark. And then additionally on the GPS map. All the, all the red triangles indicate every time that the bus exceeded 60 miles per hour. Another, another common view would be the front windshield view. So in the event of an accident, that would be very useful to be able to see what actually happened. Might, uh, could save a driver's, could save a liability by the district. It could exonerated driver from uh, an accident that wasn't actually their fault. It's 
So we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. What what questions does anybody have? I, I'm kind of reading the chat stream here. I see one question. Um, has there been any way to make sure Google Maps keeps up with the GPS feature automatically? And uh, the answer to that question is we no longer use GPS maps. Um, this, this happened, actually I think it was fall of 2018, I believe, that uh, Google Maps, they actually changed their API. So REI made the decision to no longer use Google Maps at that time. So our, our, our maps that are within the system are actually a, a, a proprietary system that is no longer related to Google. Okay, so would my, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, would mine update automatically? Is that something I need to do on ours? Because I've used Google Maps in the past with it. Okay. And I've had all those problems with it. So I'm wondering um, if I could access that for this upcoming year um, so I can follow my buses and what I need to do to do that. We might need to talk after this um, prior to the year starting. Now, are you referring to real-time GPS tracking or the GPS that's in the recorded footage? Well, I'm still running and getting the hard drives and, and bringing them into the office. Um, so the majority of them have not, I, I can't track the maps. So for instance, if I need to prove that a student was on the bus, I usually use the map and say, okay, this is the road they were next to, this is when they threw it out the window or, or it broke or whatever. And the map feature just hasn't been there. It takes me over to either Oklahoma or New York. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it might be necessary to, and, and I, I don't know if you've con contacted our technical support. There is, um, if you go under HD5 on radioeng.info, um, you just, if you simply download the latest version of the software, that, that could correct the issue. Um, I know that it's always good to have the latest version of the software. And if you're notice, ever noticing something that isn't quite working the way that you want it to, call myself, of course, as I know you have, um, or call Natalie, or, um, or of course, our technical support team that actually, it's 24-7, 365, and they actually reside in Omaha. They're actually in that manufacturing production facility. And uh, so they can help you through any of those issues if you have any challenges. They might even... Uh, have some solutions to the various topics. Okay, I'll do that, Craig. I haven't really been working on them this summer because we've been closed. Right. But, uh, prior yep. to school, I'll do that. Thank you. You bet. All right, any other questions that anybody might have for REI? Nothing. All right, Craig and Nat, we appreciate you guys joining us. Hopefully you'll join us for the uh, final session today. And thank you for everybody that uh, has joined over the last two days. Um, I believe TAA is going to be doing just a couple small giveaways on behalf of TAA uh, in this final session. We've got a just a brief PowerPoint to uh, show you guys this is a final send off and um, you know, I, I think it's safe to call this uh, whole two-day conference a success. So um, we appreciate everybody registering, attending, spending the day with us. As we know, everybody's been probably pulled into meetings and trying to work around their day-to-day uh, -day operations as well. So uh, with that being said, Craig, we'll see you in full pirate uniform next year. And uh, regardless of theme, you have to come dress as a pirate. You bet. You got it. <laughs> I love it. I know, right? I don't have to do that, just Craig. <laughs> just Craig. Perfect. That's so, com completely fair. And if he really wanted to, he could wear his Green Lantern outfit since he didn't get to wear it last year. He could <laughs> wear it on, on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. There, he should. Oh, man. Dude, you should have been in costume for this presentation. That's what I said. I thought about it. Thought oh, about man. it. Last minute, I chickened. I guess I chickened out. That's all right. Anywho, uh, we will see everybody in about 20 minutes for the 2.30 final session. 
uh, make sure to join in. We will have a post conference survey out to everybody as well. And just a reminder, uh, check out the YouTube uh, channel, subscribe to all of us, and uh, we'll get all of these videos up on YouTube hopefully by the end of the week. All right. See you later, everybody. Thanks, guys.